Texas. Medina for Texas.com, M E D I N A for Texas.com. As much as I like Kinky Friedman, he probably doesn't have that much of a chance of winning. And he'll just pull libertarians and independents away. I have looked at her policies, her platform. Uh, she is, I know, a Ron Paul supporter. And I'm going to support Deborah Medina for governor. She's in major polls, has been as high as 72% in Texas monthly polls. Uh, in fact, they've had the poll multiple times. She began at 44.58, or right at 45%. She's now grown in the latest poll to 72% in a statewide Texas monthly poll. Other polls show her uh, neck and neck or leading or only slightly behind. People don't like Kay Bailey Hutchinson, who is a steering committee member of the North American Union Bilderberg Group, on record. That's in mainstream news. Rick Perry bragged to the Dallas Morning News that he was violating the Logan Act, federal law. In uh, 2007, he went to uh, Istanbul, Turkey, and spoke to the private uh, group who's involved in taking over a lot of Texas utilities. But he's only been a speaker. Uh, being vetted by Bilderberg. She is a steering committee member. There's only four in the United States out of 125 world leaders. She is bad news all the way. Rick Perry is absolutely terrible as well for NAFTA and GATT, open borders, though he acts like he is and he supports the NAFTA superhighways, the Trans-Texas Corridor, trying to block the legislature from blocking it twice. So he wears a big hat. But he's all hat and no cattle. He is an inch deep, a mile wide. I'm telling you, the more I learn about Deborah Medina, MedinaForTexas.com, the more excited I get. Now, I told you last hour, Ron Paul is going to run for president in 2012 unless he has any medical problems. And thank God right now he's in great shape and jogs several miles a day and rides his bike several miles a day. Uh, but we need to draft him to run early, and we need to support his son, who I told you was going to run six months before it was announced that Rand Paul was going to run for U.S. Senate, and he's going to win unless there's election fraud. We need to come out and get the word out, just like we did on the flu vaccine being dangerous. Seventy-plus percent six months ago said they were going to take the H1N1. Now it's only about 30 percent saying they're going to take it. Grassroots media, ear-to-ear, person-to-person, Town hall to town hall, local talk radio. I want to hear everybody call into every talk radio station every day and say, Ron Paul for president, Deborah Medina for Texas governor. And we can do this. People are sick of the Democrats. They're sick of the Republicans. The federal Congress only has an 11% approval rating, the lowest in history. Obama's gone from 86 down to 42 to 45, depending on the poll. He's dropping like a rock. And so are the Republicans. And that's because people realize that our republic is going to hell in a handbasket. So I am very, very excited uh, to have Deborah Medina in with us till the end of the radio show in 50 minutes. Deborah, it's great to have you here with us. Thank you, Alex. I'm thrilled to be here. You know, my, my, I'm proud of the fact that my family was at San Jacinto and was at Goliad, and that the Ayers family on my mom's side raised Colonel Travis's son, and that my father's family was involved in the founding of Texas, was, was Mexican land grants in 1829. And I learned here that uh, you had relatives in the fight for Texas independence. That's exciting. Not a carpetbagger uh, like George Bush or these other people we've had down here. It's very exciting to have a real bona fide Texan. Spend some time telling us about Deborah Medina. Then we're going to go over your policies. All right. I born and raised in South Texas. Daddy worked for the phone company. Mom was a stay-at-home mom. Four kids in my family. Husband and I both went to public school in Beeville, Texas. I say that I grew up on a farm. Mama bought mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup at the grocery store. We raised everything else we ate uh, there on the farm. Butchered chickens, butchered hogs, butchered cows, milk to cow, that kind of thing. Uh, registered nurse by profession. Moved with my husband in 1989 to Wharton, Texas, and have been very active in politics. Your listeners may know that Wharton is smack dab in the middle of Ron Paul's congressional district. So I have grown up politically, if you will, under his mentoring. Um, understand a little bit about economics and the rightful role of government, the proper role of government in our lives, and uh, got tapped, actually, as I was in Houston preparing for an in-the-Fed rally, helping the organizers in Houston get ready for that first in-the-Fed. You'll remember we, we held those all over the country at every Federal Reserve Bank last November. And it was November a year ago that someone said, Deborah, why don't you run for governor? 
I knew right away that I didn't like the choices we were going to have come March of 2010. It took me about four months to decide I would get in this race, and I'm fighting for all I've got. We're seeing people jumping on board every day, and we really need help to make sure that we win this race in Texas. Sure. I mean, Kinky's a nice fellow, and I, and, and I, and I want to be able to support him, but... When I had him on four or five months ago, you hadn't yet declared you weren't on the radar yet, or you were just getting ready to. And, uh, you know, because compared to Rick Perry and the Democrats and, and Kay Bailey, you know, he's great. But I'm, I'm sorry, I think Kinky should get behind you because Ron Paul has the grassroots system. Uh, he, he became a focal point for people that understand the shadow government, the, you know, the New World Order, this entire system. And if we get the Ron Paul uh, slash Tea Party that uh, that Rick Perry and others have been trying to co-opt behind you, the real McCoy, we can win. And I think that you grew up on a farm, that you are a nurse, that you have a great record, that you are a Ron Paul supporter, that you got drafted, that you got tapped, that, that that's what we need. We don't need another slick lawyer. We don't need another slick politician. We don't need some globalist stooge like Kay Belly Hutchinson. All the other candidates are a nightmare, except for Kinky. He's a nice fella. But you are the only choice. And have you been surprised by the explosive support you've been seeing? I have been. You know, people ask me every day, well, Deborah, how are you going to win? You don't have a lot of money. And I said, no, but I got a lot of shoe leather, leather and a lot of elbow grease. People are walking streets, pounding the pavement already today. Uh, I feel like we've got waiter, waitresses at the window saying, give me food, give me food. They are hungry to get out there and do the work. And it's, it's through the alternative media that that message is getting out. And we need to give people some marching orders today. I hope we can do that on your show, help people understand how they can help us win this race. It's real important. And I want to be clear, resistance is victory. Ron Paul didn't win in 2008. But he's now all over television. They admit he's the third rail uh, that people are shattering the left-right paradigm with. And it's going to be very hard to beat him in 2012. It's going to be very hard to defeat Ron Paul in 2012. And I'll tell you right now, he's going to run. And I'm not going to say I heard that from him. I, I can just I, I can tell you it's going to happen, unless there's a, uh, a, a medical problem. We have people running for Senate, running for House. Even if you don't win this time... It's going to grow the Texas Ron Paul libertarian true conservative base. But you actually have a great shot. But even if you lose the pounding the pavement, the money that's donated, that goes towards injecting alternatives. Then as things get even worse, next time we'll have an even better shot. But again, you have a shot on winning because of Ron Paul and the grassroots support. And uh, this is so historical. Let's talk about the poll numbers and then get into marching orders and what you would do as Texas governor. You bet. I, I really do believe we are going to win this thing. Uh, and I think that we're seeing evidence of that every day. People don't know how to put their hands around what's happening in these tea parties. You know, they're so used to having an executive director of some association or another that they can call and say, what do your members think? You can't do that with Rick this. Perry's getting booed. Senator Cornyn's That's getting right. booed by conservatives. That's We're right. tired of it. That's right. We don't want some guy with a big cowboy hat who can't ride a horse up there. Agreed. Agreed. I'm sorry, go ahead. I think all of Texas knows that, but there's no one person you can call. These are, in fact, a bunch of independent Texans right where they ought to be getting behind this race. And so it's a great place to be. Uh, I think we're going to see some real difference made in Texas when we get back to a proper limited government. Tell us about these polls. I mean, as high as 70 plus percent. I mean, that is just absolutely astounding. Well, you know, we're waiting for some of those quote-unquote statistically valid polls, but we are seeing in these online polls uh, great margins of victory, not a runoff in March, but a clear victory in excess of 50%, which is what we need to win. So it's it brings a lot of enthusiasm to the campaign and causes people, gets our name out there, ups that name ID. That's really important. I know that, you know, a lot of folks will poo-poo these online polls, but it does raise the name ID of the candidate, makes people say, who is she? So I want to send out a thanks to everybody that is voting in these polls and helping to spread that message. Slogans. I mean, obviously, you are a Ron Paul supporter uh, who founded the Tea Parties, and it's now been taken over kind of by the Republican Party to a certain extent, but we're staying in there so they don't fully co-opt them. Uh, but slogans, I mean, I, somehow you've got to identify that you're the real McCoy, that these are establishment fakes, and that we want to try something new. We want to go with the, with a Ron Paul uh, type woman. Uh, I mean, we need you. Have, have, have you guys begun to...